Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Funko failing. Funko is not doing very well at all. Mm -mm. It's taken a turn for the worse. I was not paying attention because I really don't care about Funko Pops, but uh, some people do. And well, they're mostly known for that. They do other stuff, too. It's mostly Funko Pops. Yeah. But uh, Funko is not doing very well. In fact, they are going to cut their product line by 30%. They posted a $73 million loss. Oh. They've laid off hundreds of staffers, and the CEO got gone a couple of weeks ago. Weren't they putting stuff in landfills, too? Yes. We're going to talk about that. So this is not looking good because, you know, we, we talked about the decline in the comic book industry, and there's so many jokes being made about how... Funko products are what's propping up comic book shops. Yes, and, and conventions too. And conventions. You go to a convention, you're going to see massive piles and walls of Funko Pops. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not looking real good for Funko. I think this uh, phase of pop culture, whatever, is coming to an end. And um, it's kind of interesting because there is actually a uh, an article out on the street, which is a financial site, saying that GameStop. GameStop. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Wait a minute. GameStop. Can GameStop even afford to acquire Funko? So you know how Sears and Kmart got together and they both failed, failed together? together? Yeah. That's what would that, that's what would happen, right? It gave right? them a few extra years. Gave them a few extra years and then they they both imploded. Yeah, if if Funko and GameStop got together, that would be that would be the end, I think for both of them. But we'll we'll talk about all this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys. If you do, you'll get a woohoo. Woo uh, not many woohoos going on at Funko HQ. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, not only are I'll they... I'll give you a pity woohoo. Woohoo. A woohoo. I, like a I have womp, like womp. some products Funko's put out in the past. I do have some some pops, and I do have a couple things I liked. So I don't want... You know, I, I hate to see companies really go under. No, I'm not... I'm not... Here's the thing. Like, I'm not delighting in this. We report on this. But Funko... Started out with good intentions, I think, and then they just kind of became this almost a meme for pop culture nerd excess. Like when every people hate Funkos, they're like, I hate those yeah. things. <laughs> when every character they were cool at first, we had some of the early ones, and then when every character from every show, no matter how obscure they are, gets a Funko pop. I know. I gave her in this episode in thir three seconds on you know scene ten of episode three. Funko yeah. pop. Shows that aren't even out yet, that they don't even know are going to have an audience already have Funkos lined up, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, they've- But there is no Bubbly Steve Funko. There is no Bubbly Steve Funko. Um, Probably won't be now either. I don't think there will be. But yeah, so we talked about this before, that uh, they had so many surplus Funkos that they were dumping them into landfills. They were trashing them. Uh, they were actually spending millions of dollars, I guess, to, to warehouse all this unsold inventory- they basically, you know what they remind me of? They're like the Beanie Babies of this era. They are. They really That's are. Exactly that is exactly what they are. It's the Beanie Babies of this era. And you're going to see these things at garage sales 10 years from now for- 10 years? I'm seeing them now. Buck or two a piece, maybe, maybe. And people will be like, hey, do you have that background character from that one Disney Plus show that nobody remembers? Yeah, I'm looking for that one. Mm. Yeah, I can't remember the character's name. But yeah, they all look kind of the same too. Like a lot of times that they don't have props, you can't tell- who they are, or who they're supposed to be. Like, this just looks like a guy in a suit and it could be like 20 different characters from 20 mm -hmm. different shows. But we talked about that and I haven't really been paying much attention, but uh, they bought Mondo, which yes. I was shocked by. And Mondo always put out really good product. Well, and, wasn't the Mondo purchase before the she came out with her nose smashed and they had to send out new heads? Yeah. 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 The two two hundred and fifty dollars Shira. Yeah, we had the new heads for Shira, which I I had never opened mine, and then I went and checked when I got the head, and good thing they sent me the head because my mine's nose was smashed. <sighs> I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. You got you got a new head for your I Shira. Um, so anyway, yeah, they uh, laid off twelve to thirteen percent of their workforce uh, just a week or so ago, and right before that, the CEO quit. Well, the thing I'm worried about is they also own Loungefly. They do. They own a lot of. And I love Loungefly. I know you love Loungefly. You have a lot I of Loungefly. I see Loungefly in the then. picture, and I'm like, oh my god, that's right. They own Loungefly. <sighs> I love Loungefly. So this is what's what's shocking. Brian Mariotti has been with Funko for a very long time. He's been there for like 20 years. Dang. 20 years, and he's 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 taking a leave of absence. Yeah, he's not going to go down with this ship. They probably told him, hey, get the hell out, Brian. But again, Funko started out with the best of intentions, and we see this happen all 
the time. We have these like kind of niche publishers or niche uh, toy companies or, you know, they, they do some really cool stuff that fans love. And then they tend to go corporate. They get too big say, for their britches. No, it's not even so necessary so much big for your britches, I think, is the fact that if you want to expand, you have to have that funding. You have to have that support. And the only way you're going to get it is if you connect with a corporation and let your sell out to them and then stay on to try to grow it. But then inevitably they kill it. I think I think when they started appearing in Walmarts, that was kind of the beginning of the end. Because, you know, Walmart wants a lot of inventory. You, mm-hmm. con- you know, constantly have to give them new stuff. And that's what kind of worries me about seeing like super seven and some other products like that, like Walmart and target is I'm like, are they going to get to a point where they're not making products for the fans anymore? Wait, they have just... the target and Walmart super yeah. seven. Yeah, they do. I've never yeah. seen them. Yeah, they do. Um, so maybe target. I don't know if Walmart, I don't I know, think Walmart does. I know, I know, I, I know wrong. I super seven. They have them at target. I've seen them at target. I know I've seen them okay. at target. I've never I was seen looking at Walmart, power rangers. But... I'm like, God, 18 bucks for a Yeah, but that's because they were doing small runs. Now well, they're thing. going into major retailers. They aren't, though, but they're keeping the prices the same. Yeah. Well, that's the thing because Super 7, again, you know, it's very similar to Funko in that they started as a, a company that was built around fandom and they were producing small batches of toys for fans. And then they became this, like, kind of, they're become very kind of corporate right now. Mm-hmm. And now they're producing, like, Hasbro could stop making G.I. Joe figures tomorrow. And Super 7 could just take the ball and run with it. Yeah, but some of their figures, I mean, they're cool, but they're not like the articulation and stuff that... No, but they could do it. They could. They want to. But I mean, they already charge more than they should now. What does that yeah, cost? They, but, you know. Well, they have the 7-inch G.I. Joes, which are as articulated as the classifieds, but they're based more on the animated mm-hmm. versions. They could easily just take that over if Hasbro decides they don't want to make toys anymore. Yeah. But anyway, this guy, yeah, 20 years, he's out the door. Um, he said, Funko has been my labor of love for two decades. While I'm going to step away from the day-to-day business to recharge my batteries, I plan to stay active on our board. I hope to come back and contribute to Funko again in new creative ways. And uh, he was going to San Diego. So they announced it right before San Diego. Right before San Diego. But Why? Like, why is he leaving absence now? Like, was there some scandal? I don't is it know. Because they weren't doing well and they're trying to say. I think face? it's because they're not doing well. Um, cause it actually is worse. Uh, first quarter of this year, they had a $61 million loss. And that, that included a 30 put $1 million write off. Uh, yeah. Was that the stuff that ended up in landfills? Uh, probably. So now they have a $73 million loss for Q2. So this is oh, not good. On top of the 61. Yes. For- yeah. They're bleeding money. Uh, they had to cut almost 200 employees, 180 to 200 employees, 13% of the workforce. That's why he's gone. You Please don't kill lounge fly. Uh, hope I'm not. sorry. The rest of it, you know, I, for me personally, whatever. Lounge fly, don't kill it. The rest of it can burn. I don't. But care. I need. I want to keep lounge fly. No, I do think it's a case of where again, and since it's fun cover late, I can say this: lounge fly is putting out too much stuff too. Yeah. Like it used to be, you get a, you get a couple things here and there, and they were special. And now it's like you know. They're putting out constantly every franchise ever, and it's getting to be too many choices, too much. Well, that's what's going to happen with that's what's going to happen with uh, uh, Mondo too, because Mondo used to be special. They would drop action figures, or they would drop posters occasionally, and people would wait. And uh, but because they have to make millions and millions and millions of dollars, they're going to have to keep churning out profit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, when you're selling to Walmart and Target and stuff, you have to churn out tons of profit, and they're not making. Tons of profit. No. So this is uh, two days ago, ICV2. Funko plans to reduce its SKU count by 30%, the interim CEO said, as the company posted a $73 million loss for Q2. Uh, yeah, so that's why he stepped down. Wow. The SKU reduction is a key part of the strategy to turn around the company, which deteriorated to this year's Q2 uh, loss from $14.7 million profit in 2022 uh, Q1, they had $61 million in losses. This quarter, they have seen. Oh God, God, that's insane. That's a lot. Sales were down 24% from 2022. Once for disclosed that large wholesale customers had been cutting their inventories. Correct, because they aren't selling them. Yeah, they're not selling, which had been one reason for the company's performance in Q2 and warned of continued tough conditions for the rest of the year, lowering guidance. Not only did customer inventory reductions contribute to the sales decline, they also hit gross margins. Funko took immediate write downs. That was them throwing stuff out, mm-hmm. basically. 
Um, so a lot of it sounds like they're turning away their product. They said customer order cancellations during the quarter resulted in a formulaic increase in our inventory, obsolescence reserve. But long story short, we can't sell the Funko Pops we have. So please, we canceled our order. Please don't send any more. Right. Please, for the love of God, do not send any more effing Funko Pops. I'm seeing Walmart. They used to have a big section of them, and now they don't. They just don't. Uh, our fans and partners demand we be quick to market, responsive to rapidly changing pop culture. And that's the problem, right? You got to have a Funko Pop for everything. Nimble and creative in our product designs and operationally excellent, he said in the conference call. Uh, we lost sight of the importance of these competencies. And as a result, the number of product lines and SKUs we have produced has grown ra rapidly, right. bringing too much complexity to the business with too, many too choices. low returns. There's yep. too many choices. Unless you have diehard fans that are going to collect everything. And I mean, let's be honest here. That's a very small percentage of the market. You're not going to, you're going to have too much. Same with what I'm seeing with Loungefly is I love Loungefly. I don't want, to, I mean, I know you guys kind of figured that out. Hey, guess what guys? I like yeah. Loungefly. But, um, I'm noticing too that it is, it's like constant new drops. And I think that it gets to a place where you're overproducing and you're getting too many choices. And if I already have like two Halloween bags, I don't need all 20 of your bags. You know, I just don't. And I think people are just, you know, just give me one cute something in this vein for this season or whatever. And you're just overdoing it with every stupid property ever. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and that's just Steve it. Clown, or Clownfish Lounge my bag would be awesome. That would be kind of cute. We could, we could make one similar. To that we could but, but i want lounge fly because i love them so <laughs> anyway. i don't think they would love us enough to make probably not those days are over it seems like they're they're gonna focus on what, what actually well, if anybody sells. from funko that works here is listening just know i really re i really appreciate she what does. you do she does and i feel bad I and feel now my pinky boo has also followed in my footsteps and she also appreciates what you do she has several lounge fly bags and she buys it with her own money so yay so funko yes uh i i did not realize they were uh publicly traded that they have their own, their own I stock. I did not either. FNKO. I do not own stocks. I wow. do know GameStop had stocks. Yeah. We all know how that went. So this is definitely the blindly and the blind, or as I like to say, uh, Sears and Kmart getting together. Mm -hmm. um, this is coming from the street, right? Well, it's Wall Street memes, right? <laughs> so maybe that's what this is. Given GameStop's strong balance sheet, the video game company may turn to acquisitions and turn around its business. Where are they getting them? Okay. So they're saying the reason that GameStop could... Uh, could potentially purchase Funko as they have a com GameStop has a comfortable cash position. What? How? Since when? Oh, you know what? They probably they bought their own stocks when they had the stock issue and made money. Funko could make an appealing acquisition because GameStop is looking. Is this a? Is this well, for real? GameStop sells Funkos like a lot. They, 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 they get exclusive do. That's, all the time. And they're stuff. not selling so, games. I mean, it kind of makes sense, but I'm just I don't know if that would be a good acquisition on GameStop's end. No. No, a uh, theoretical acquisition of Funko could add as much as a billion to GameStop's revenue annually. What? This has got to be a, this well, is not a have, joke. Wait, the one guy stepped down though, and they have an interim CEO. Yeah. And if that someone else acquired it, they would have that would become part of the company with the C under their CEO. So I mean, maybe there's a little bit of truth to it. Who knows? GameStop's robust balance sheet is among the video game retailers' strength. Yeah, they have a bunch of cash. They're sitting on cash. So they they could do it. That's freaking but maybe crazy. Maybe they could pay their employees. Maybe they could pay their employees. Maybe and buy they could the, let them and buy them cleaning supplies. Buy them cleaning supplies. So they're saying could Funko be an acquisition target? To be clear, it's speculation. GameStop has made no indication it's seriously considering the acquisition of Funko. However, the purchase of the toy company would make sense considering Funko's strong link to GameStop's business. Yeah, but they have a strong link to other people's businesses too. They do. They do. The problem is that they're not selling video games like they used to. But like I said, these two go together. It's going to be Sears and Kmart. Mm -hmm. And they're going to just, you know, it's like, oh, it made a lot of sense to sell Kim more appliances at Kmart for the three years it was still in business, you know, whatever it was. So, yeah, they said that um, collectibles, specifically Funko, is like 16% of the company's revenue. Well, no, that was collectibles in general, not Funko specifically. Right. But they sell, they said that they sell mostly Funko. Oh, okay. That's, that's mostly what they sell. They have they lots sell. of stuff, not just Funko, but yeah. Uh, Funko has a market cap of about $330 million. Um, yeah, and it's it dropped used to be off. It used to be $1.31 billion Holy two years hell. ago. Holy. The company has seen its share price go from $27 last year to a 52-week low point this year, less than $7 a share. Um, yeah, so who knows? I mean, it's something's going to have to happen because here's the thing. Their revenue is not going to roll in if, if retailers aren't carrying Funko anymore, which is what they're saying because there's too much crap. They can't sell what they have. They can't sell what they have. Uh, and you're going to make less to sell, you're not going to turn this around. 
Mm-hmm. You know, but like it's going to take something really drastic to turn this around. And you're not going to have a company like Mattel or Hasbro. I don't think acquire Funko because I don't think Mattel or Hasbro are interested in toys. I think Mattel and Hasbro are in the movie business now. They're mm-hmm. in the video game business. They don't want to be messing no. with toys. They anymore, take the so. licensing fee, but that's about it. So. That is about it. So we're going to wrap this up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.